द हिस्टोरिक कॉस्टिज्म एंड डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ऑफ दलित्स इन द कैथोलिक चर्च इन इंडिया कंटिन्यूज अन अबेटेड इवन आफ्टर थ्री डेकेड्स ऑफ पब्लिक स्ट्रगल अगेंस्ट इट बाय दलित क्रिस्टियंस especially by the dalit christian liberation movement dclm from 1990 the struggle gave rise to many dialogues and meetings with the hierarchy but all these in vain this is little known to the vatican the holy see and the international christian community the indian catholic hierarchy has not spoken the truth about it to the vatican and the holy see but it only covers it up it is now left to the victim dalit christians to expose this blatant situation and continue their struggle promises were made dalit policies were declared acknowledging the truth and justice of dalits but not implemented at all the policies are there just for a show it is a real breach of trust by the indian catholic hierarchy and religious superiors so the intervention of the vatican and the holy see is necessary and inevitable to combat casteism in catholic church this video is a brief documentation of some of the dialogues meetings and representations of dclm with the hierarchy in tamil nadu and india during the past 3 decades it shows also the initiative taken by it to raise concern at the international level on 5th july 1992 a delegation of dalit christian liberation movement dclm met cardinal d simon lourdes swami from the vatican and had a dialogue with him in the presence of the new archbishop michael agustin of pondicherry godalore the delegation was comprised of the dclm state vice president professor mary john general secretary dalit c arike das advisory committee chairman salethian and other office bearers it raised the issue of continued caste discrimination against the dalits in the catholic church a firm demand was made for appointing a dalit bishop in tamil nadu pondicherry region which had been historically denied following this the first dalit bishop am chinnappa was appointed in december 1993 in vellu diocese on 6th october 1994 a group of dalit christians of kk pudur village in madras mailapur archdiocese led by dclm met the archdiocese administration demanding to open their village church which was closed following a conflict between caste christians and dalit christians the conflict arose since caste christians refused to treat dalit christians equally in the church and in liturgical services the church which remained closed for months was opened after dalit christians made representation to the archbishop in may 1999 a regional seminar on the empowerment of oppressed people as the target of jubilee 2000 was conducted at trichy jointly by the catholic bishops conference of india cbci and the tamil nadu bishops council tnbc coordinated by father s luth swami executive secretary of the scbc commission of cbci it was presided over by archbishop arul das james the then president of tnbc mary john the president of dclm presented the case of the historical casteism still preventing the empowerment of dalit christians within the catholic church he appealed for a concerted action by the hierarchy to eradicate caste discrimination particularly at the hierarchical and leadership levels the regional office of the scst commission of the tamil nadu bishops council tnbc was established at udayadeepam karumandapam trichy archbishop am chinnappa 
the then chairman of the SCST Commission and other bishops of TNBC were present on the occasion. The president of DCLM, Mary John, lighted a lamp and spoke on the need for a close collaboration of DCLM and the Commission. A book was released to mark the occasion by Archbishop Michael Augustine and the first copy was received by Mary John. At this juncture, a joint forum called the Tamil Nadu Dalit Christians Development Forum was formed, which was an outcome of the two days colloquium between the TNBC, TNPCRI and the DCLM. It was conducted in November 1996 at the Archbishop's House, Madurai. The Misario Germany initiated the idea of the colloquium and also sponsored it with its representative's participation with the aim to promote collaboration between DCLM and TNBC and avoid the conflicting situation. As far back as January 2000, DCLM delegation led by its president, Dr. Mary John, addressed the National Assemblies of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, CBCI, and the Conference of Religious India, that is the National CRI, which were held in Chennai. Memoranda were submitted highlighting the historically continuing problem of casteism and discrimination of Dalits within the Catholic Church. The delegation urged them to eradicate these at all levels. The executive committees of both these apex bodies promised to take necessary steps for the same. A DCLM delegation led by Professor Mary John met Archbishop Pedro Lope Quintana, the then Apostolic Nuncio in India, during his visit to Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry. The meeting took place at the Archbishop's house in Pondicherry. It was for the specific mission to demand appointment of a Dalit Archbishop, a right which had been denied till that time. In the hour-long meeting with him, the delegates gave reasons and justifications for the demand. There was positive response and the first Dalit Archbishop A.M. Chinnappa was appointed in April 2005 in Madras Mailapur Archdiocese. After years of demanding by DCLM, the Tamil Nadu Bishops' Council brought out a policy of integrated development of Catholic Dalits in Tamil Nadu in October 2004. It is commonly called the Eight-Point Action Plan. This was in fact a follow-up to the finding of an evaluation study that the earlier 10-point program declared in 1990 to eradicate casteism and discrimination against the Dalits was not implemented. This new policy was released in Trichy by the then president of TNBC, Archbishop Peter Fernando, in the presence of Tamil Nadu Catholic bishops, religious superiors and provincials, and lay leaders. The executive secretary of SCBC Commission of the CBCI, Father A. Philemon Raj, briefed on the process of evolving the policy. The former Executive Secretary, Father S. Lourdes Swami, complimented DCLM for its role in the whole process. The policy particularly emphasizes to give equitable representation to Dalit Catholics in the hierarchy and leadership. DCLM was a partner in the formulation of the policy and its president Mary John spoke on the occasion appealing for its serious implementation. He also warned of the wrath of the people if not done. Mrs. Arul Mary Ulaganathan DCLM gave the vote of thanks. However, it is regrettable that the policy is not implemented till now.
A DCLM delegation met the executive body of the Conference of Catholic Bishops of India, CCBI, during its 23rd Plenary Assembly held in Chennai in January 2011. The CCBI executive body was headed by its president, Cardinal Oswald Gracias, and included Cardinal Telesfo Topo, the Secretary General of CBCI Archbishop Stanislas Fernando, Archbishop A. M. Chinnappa, Bishop A. Nidinathan, and a few other Archbishops. In the hour long meeting, DCLM President Mary John presented a detailed memorandum highlighting the decades and centuries of caste domination and discrimination of Dalits in Catholic Church and urged the hierarchy to take concrete action to change the situation. Also, appeal was made for their full support to the struggle to secure the scheduled cost status to Dalit Christians. DCLM delegation met the Apostolic Nuncio in India, Archbishop Salvatore Pernacchio, at Madras Mailapur Archbishop's house on 27 January 2013, the day the new Archbishop George Anthony Swami was consecrated there. In the hour long meeting with him, a detailed memorandum was presented on the issue of caste discrimination and domination in Catholic Church, especially on the exclusion of Dalit Catholics from the hierarchy. Appeal was made to appoint Dalit bishops and archbishops in the vacancies arising then subsequently in Tamil Nadu Pondicherry, since there were only two Dalit bishops out of the 18 dioceses. His attention was drawn to also the ongoing struggle against the denial of vocation to the Dalit Catholic community in the Sivagangai diocese. The nuncio assured to look into these issues and do the needful. He gave the assurance in the presence of Bishop A. Nidhinathan, who was with him during the meeting. A historically significant meeting of DCLM with a top official of the Vatican, Cardinal Fernando Filoni, the then prefect of the Vatican Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, took place on the 9th February 2013 when he visited the shrine of Our Lady Vailankani as the Papalian boy. It took place in the very presence of the President of the CBCA, Cardinal Oswald Gracias, Cardinal Telesfo Topo, the Apostolic Nuncio in India, Archbishop Salvatore Pernacchio, the Chairman of the SCBC Commission of CBCI, Bishop Anthony Swami Nidhinathan, the President of the Tamil Nadu Bishops' Council, Bishop Peter Remigius, and a couple of other archbishops. The President of DCLM, Dr. Mary John, explained about the centuries-old caste domination and discrimination of Dalits in the Indian Catholic Church, and urged Cardinal Filoni to intervene to end these. The DCLM delegation categorically told him either to take steps to end the historical discrimination in the Indian Catholic Church or else to help the Dalit Christians to establish a separate Dalit Catholic rite directly under the jurisdiction of the Pope. It was emphasized that the intervention of the Vatican and the Pope is necessary and inevitable. Cardinal Fernando Filoni assured to take up the issue for serious consideration. This he reflected also in his address to the CBCA General Assembly held there the next day, 10th February, by raising concern with the bishops about the marginalization of Dalits, especially in the vocation, in appointments of bishops and prelates, and in leadership positions in the church. 
a delegation of the National Council of Dalit Christians, NCDC, led by its National President, Professor Mary John, met the President of the CBCA, Cardinal Oswald Gracias, on 18th October 2013 in Mumbai, to request him to inaugurate a rally in Delhi planned to be conducted in December to demand the Union Government to include Dalit Christians in the scheduled cost SC list. The delegation included the national leaders, Mr. Vijay George, Father Bosco, Mr. S.S. Vagmare, and some leaders from Maharashtra. They appealed to him to mobilize the full support of the Indian Church hierarchy for this cause. Concern was raised with him also about the cost discrimination suffered by Dalits within the Catholic Church, recalling the continued representation to him by the DCLM in this regard. On 14 October 2014, DCLM demonstrated at the Secretariat of the Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry Conference of Religious India, TNPCRI, at Dindivanam during its annual General Assembly meeting. It was to protest its failure to implement the Dalit policy declared jointly by the TNBC and TNPCRI 10 years before in 2004 itself. This led to a dialogue with the office bearers of the TNBCRI and they assured the people gathered there that they would discuss in the General Assembly the ways and means to implement the policy in the congregation and their institutions, but the implementation still remains neglected. NCDC National President Mary John, National Convener V. J. George, and leaders from Kerala, Mr. Ebenezer, Father John Arikal, met Cardinal Basilios Klimis, the then President of CBCI in Trivandrum, seeking support for the Dalit Christians' struggle, demanding the Union Government to extend the scheduled cost status to them. During this meeting with him, concern was also raised on behalf of the DCLM on the issue of denial of vocation to Dalit Christians in Sivaganga Diocese of Tamil Nadu for his intervention to resolve it. On 12 May 2018, a delegation of DCLM had a dialogue with the President of the TNBC, Archbishop Anthony Papuswamy, its Vice President, Bishop Anthony Swami Nidhinathan, and its SCST Commission Chairman, Bishop Thomas Paul Somi. In the three-hour-long dialogue with them, serious concern was raised about the total lack of implementation of its Dalit policies of 1990 and 2004. The delegates recalled the various stages, starting from the public struggles of DCLM in 1990 and the subsequent meetings and dialogues with the TNBC, which led to the formulation and declaration of these policies. The delegates expressed regret about the indifferent and unconcerned attitude of the present-day bishops and archbishops. The TNBC president and other office bearers acknowledged the failure to implement and promised to take all steps to implement in the years to come. But it is highly regrettable that their promise is not kept. <laughs>
CLM delegation met the president of CCBI Cardinal Oswald Gracias along with its secretary general Archbishop Anil Joseph Thomas Kuto the deputy secretary general Father Stephen Alathara during its 31st plenary assembly held at Mahabalipuram in Tamil Nadu Bishop Anthony Swami Nidinathan the vice president of the TNBC was also present various issues of discrimination against dalits within the catholic church was raised especially the denial of appointment of dalits bishops and archbishops and superiors serious concern was raised about the non implementation of the cbca policy for empowerment of the dalits in the catholic church which was declared in 2016. <laughs> And then successive four bishop. Now there are only two Dalit bishop. So 1990 raised the issue that would be still Dalit bishop. Now 25, 28 years now, there are only two Dalit bishop. Am I going to answer all this? All those things you are saying is right. We will try to educate, they are all educated also. The book will So the issue is cost. It's simply more. Especially in Tamil Nadu. And if you know, in Tamil Nadu, in India, in India, See, the family and there are five children. Go back. 
apply that also. We begin with the So you have this is a long term program. Uh, my question, uh, my heart, I mean, personally, I have uh, spoken to Rome, spoken to Nancio, spoken to the bishops. My heart certainly is for the is for the family. You like to help, but you must make it possible. Then. If you go in agitation, let's say you go in agitation, means your, your children will not be your church will not be in hostile, you won't be vocation. Then don't say they don't the want to take it. You must plant the seed. What you said also is right. It's not only for Dalits, it's everybody, everybody. But I would like to you you must make a better effort. The issues that we are presenting is to come from what we are saying. What we are saying is right. That's what we are saying. I have a good family. You know that for everybody, not only for Dalits. Why are you talking about Dalits? Especially for me. I want like Dalit families to come to... I would like Dalit priests. That's why you must... Except, it's only because somebody is pious, then he has come to... I have Dalit priests in my diocese. The problem is, the human agency decides the admission uh, ordination, training, and all this human agency. This human agency here yeah, is not about spirit, it's the past spirit that is falling. That is the issue we are raising. We are all pious, we are all pious. We are all pious. We In March 2021, DCLM delegation had separate meetings with the TNBC President Bishop Anthony Papasamy, its SCST Commission Chairman Bishop Thomas Paul Swami, and with Archbishop George Anthony Swami of Madras Mailapur, who is the Vice President of CCBA and also a member of the Vatican Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples. It was to appeal for their official representation to the Apostolic Nuncio in India and the Holy See to appoint Dalit bishops and archbishops in Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry in the existing six vacancies. The historical need for giving equitable representation to Dalit Catholics in the hierarchy was emphasized with them. Each of them agreed that the demand is just and they categorically assured to do the needful from their side. They promised to speak and write to the Apostolic Nuncio in India and to the Holy See to explain and draw their attention to the issue. We are yet to see the positive response. International concern is needed for Dalit Christians' problem. Casteism in India and discrimination of Dalits is well known to the international community, but the same prevailing within the Christian community and church is not known to them. The Indian Catholic hierarchy has been using their official positions only to cover up the issue from the world Christianity and the Holy See. So the problem persists till today and the Dalit Christians are left to expose it. DCLM has been taking some initiative to draw the attention of the international Christian community, church leaders and organizations to the issue. An international conference on Dalit Christians rights was held on 24-25 April 2006 in Hertfordshire, UK. It was organized by the Voice of Dalit International, OD UK. Mr. Eugene Kulas, the Director of OD UK, and Mr. Vijay George, Chairman of the OD India, provided an opportunity to represent DCLM in the conference. The President of DCLM, Mary John, presented a paper on the conditions of Dalit Christians in India especially the issue of costism and cost discrimination faced by them in the Catholic Church and their struggle to combat it. Archbishop Marambudi Joji 
the first Dalit Catholic Archbishop in India and Jesuit Father A. X. J. Bosco were also in the delegation from India. A delegation comprising of Mr. Eugen Kolas, Director of OD UK, Mr. V. J. George, Chair of OD India, and Dr. Mary John visited England, Ireland, and Scotland to meet church leaders, communities, and civil society organizations to create awareness about Dalit Christians in India, the problems they face in the society and the church. Mary John expressed concern especially about the grave and blatant cost oppression and discrimination against Dalits in the Catholic Church. Though they comprise the big majority, he highlighted the struggle of Dalit Christians led by DCLM for more than two decades and the lack of sincerity and commitment on the part of the Catholic hierarchy. He appealed to the church leaders in Europe to raise concern about it with the Vatican and the Holy See. Some of the church leaders and organizations met by the delegates are Cardinal Sean Brady in Armagh of Northern Ireland, Archbishop Philip Tartaglia of Glasgow, Scotland, Bishop Patrick Lynch of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of England and Wales, and the officials of the international organizations Procare in Dublin, SCIAF in Scotland, and Skillshare International at Leicester, UK. A conference on Christian responsibility to Dalits and cost discrimination was held in St. George Cathedral, London on 18 and 19 February 2014. It was organized by the Christian Network Against Cost Discrimination UK. Mary John, the president of DCLM and uh, national president of National Council of Dalit Christians, NCDC, spoke in the conference on the struggle of Dalit Christians within and outside the church, especially with a reference to the Catholic Church. Some of the main speakers in the conference were Lord Bishop Richard Harris, House of Lords, Lord David Alton, House of Lords, Bishop Patrick Lynch of Catholic Bishops' Conference of England and Wales, Bishop Petty Broadbent, Deputy Bishop of London, Bishop Sarath Chandra Noyak, member of the Dalit Commission of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, Father Gerard Michel, SJ, Chair of Christian Network Against Cost Discrimination, UK, and Mr. Vijay George, the National Convener of NCDC, and uh, Reverend David Haslam, founding member of the International Dalit Solidarity Network. On 30 June 2015, a delegation of the DCLM and Vidudalai Tamil Pudigal Kachi, led by the organization's leaders, Mr. Mary John and Mr. Kodande Arasan, submitted a complaint to the UN Secretary General through the UN Information Center in New Delhi, accusing the Vatican and the Holy See for not making any concerned intervention to stop the cost domination and discrimination against the Dalits in the Catholic Church. Though Dalit Christians and their movements have been making numerous representations for more than two decades, the complaint categorically says that the Holy See, with its permanent observer state status in the United Nations, has the obligation to combat costism in the Catholic Church in India. On 27 February 2016, a delegation of DCLM met Reverend Father Adolfo Nicolas, the World Superior General of the Society of Jesus in Loyola College, Chennai, during his visits in Tamil Nadu, India. The President of DCLM, Professor Mary John, thanked him 
for the Dalit option policy of the Jesuit community implemented in Tamil Nadu in the spirit of the Jesuits General Congregation 32. He appealed for further intensive action of the Society of Jesus for the equal rights and representation of Dalit Christians in the Indian Church and to pioneer the cause in the World Catholic Church. In particular, he appealed to the Superior General to appoint Dalit and non-Dalit Jesuits alternately as Jesuit provincials in Tamil Nadu in order to bring about sustainable change and help Dalit Christians' cause. Father Adolfo Nicolas assured the continued support of the Society of Jesus. A conference on Christian responsibility to Dalits and caste discrimination was held on 9 and 10 May 2017 in St. George Cathedral, London. This was the second conference on the same topic organized again by the Christian Network Against Cost Discrimination UK as a follow-up to its conference in February 2014. It is noteworthy that Cardinal Peter Turkson, Prefect of the Vatican Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, inaugurated the conference with the keynote address. Bishop Patrick Lynch of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of England and Wales, Lord Bishop Richard Harris, Member of House of Lords, Bishop Anthony Samini Northern and Bishop Anthony Pula from India were some of the main speakers. Representatives from different Christian communities and their official charities participated. Mary John, the President of DCL who joined the Indian delegation to the conference, spoke on the grave situation of caste domination and discrimination of Dalits continuing in the Catholic Church, especially their exclusion from the Catholic hierarchy and leadership positions. He emphasized the urgent need for the intervention of the Vatican and the Holy See to end the problem. Cardinal Peter Turkson assured that he would raise concern on the issue with the Vatican and the relevant dicasteries, especially the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples. Dr. Mary John is one of the founding leaders and president of the Dalit Christian Liberation Movement formed in 1990. He is himself a Dalit educationist, and he is going to include in the things he talks about some discussion of uh, caste within the Catholic community, I believe. <coughs> Dr. Mary John. I am happy for this opportunity to speak in this international conference about the cost issue in India, especially the cost issue within the church in India. I, as you might have heard so many things about costism intellectually, theologically, biblically, and so on. But I am here to speak the hearts of the people who are struggling there in the grassroots. I want the voice of the grassroots people to be heard. I find I think it's a great opportunity here to speak when His Eminence Cardinal Peter Dirksen is here from Vatican. And I want the voice of the people who are struggling to be heard by Vatican and also the other hierarchies in the church. Costism and cost discrimination in India is uh, in India and in other parts of the world is well known today, especially after the World Conference Against Racism that was held in Durban in 2000. And uh, there are so many media who talk, which talk about the casteism in general. But it is not so with casteism and discrimination against that is prevalent within the church in India. It is less known and rather invisible even to the world Christian community 
and the churches outside India. Casteism and discrimination is more prevalent and severe in the Catholic Church in India, but it has been covered up from the Vatican. The Catholic hierarchy, the clergy and prelates did nothing serious to eradicate this during all these decades and centuries. This situation continues even today much against our Christian faith as well as the constitution of India. Great responsibility now lies with the church hierarchy and Christian community, particularly the Vatican. For this reason, this conference and other initiative by the Christian network against costism and the O and OD is timely and pioneering one. We are in the Catholic Church, especially about 70% Dalits, but their representation at all levels, starting from the bishops, even cardinals, and priests, nuns, institution heads, and so on, it is only about 5%. Is a systemic discrimination at all levels, and this all these things are invisible. And uh, this was visible only our Dalit Christian Liberation Movement, briefly called DCLM, raised the voice for the first time in 1990. Finally, I want to say because our Cardinal is there, Cardinal, um, our His Eminence, Cardinal Peter Johnson is here. We have taken all the steps. We are not only fought in the street. We have taken all initiative to negotiate with the bishops, cardinals, CBCA, Tamil Nadu bishops, and so many, so many dialogues, talks, but they promise they do not do anything. They declare so many policies, but they do not implement. That's, that is the culture of the Indian church even today. And even the 10 point program, I'm not sorry, the CBCA Dalit policy. The policy itself is not strong. It's only a statement of affirmation of the discriminations, but the content of affirmative action is missing in the policy. There is no action. So, now what I want to say is that it is time that the UN steps in to resolve this issue. There should be pressure from the grassroots people, and there should be it is time that there is pressure from the Vatican. So, that is the thing I want to say. With these two pressures only, the Indian hierarchy can be made to do things, otherwise, they are not going to do. It is only lip service. We have said it for 25 years. And so I appeal on behalf of this international conference to uh, the Vatican, especially Cardinal Peter Turkson, to take a message to our Holy Father, the Pope. Uh, Pope Francis is very progressive and he means what he says. And so if this issue is brought to his attention, then definitely it will be resolved. And today, the Dalit bishops, see the plight of the Dalit bishops. The Dalit bishops saying that I am powerless, I am bishop and I am powerless. The clergy is dictating. Why? Out of 200 bishops in India, only six are Dalit bishops. How do you expect them to be powerful? Four bishops cannot be powerful against 180 caste bishops. So the Vatican take the has to take the responsibility to appoint Dalit bishops. Dalit priests, Dalit superiors, there are hundreds of congregations in India and no superior is there, maybe some exceptions, one or two. All the superiors are uh, non Dalits, the institutions are managed by them, how do we expect them? So that's why I'm very much particular to uh, appeal, especially since our eminent cardinal Peter Turkson is there. The empowerment of the Dalit means giving them the due share in power in the church, due share in power consists in the clergy and the bishops, cardinals. There have been 12 cardinals so far, not a single cardinal in front of the Dalit community. When we ask why there are no cardinals, they say there are not enough bishops. And then when we ask why there are no enough bishops, they say eh, there are not Dalit, many Dalit priests. And when we ask why no Dalit priests, they say let us pray. Let us pray for Dalit bishops, the priests. And then for so many years, they are conducting prayers and the celebrations. The, the, the Dalit Liberation Sunday, Justice Sunday, all these special prayers, special mass, nothing is happening for Dalits. But without all these special prayers, special mass, special day celebration, they are getting everything. Do you mean this is the grace of God? This is where our movement questions. This is not grace of God, it is the caste domination that is preventing 
God gives all to the Dalits. But in the human agencies, the rectors, the bishops, the board castes, they are preventing the call of God reaching the Dalits. Say the caste issue has been taken internationally. The UN has taken it up, the human committee, the elimination of caste, the CERN, that is Committee on Elimination of Racial Discrimination, that has taken up the caste issue. The European Union, European Parliament has passed a resolution uh, regarding the caste discrimination. <coughs> the US Commission for International Religious Freedom, they are talking about the caste issue. The other national human rights organizations are talking. When several embassies of governments, they are talking about the caste issue. And the UK caste law, the latest one, not UK caste law, which bans the caste discrimination as illegal. And also the world prayer for this community, they were talking about. With all this are happening, why Vatican should be silent about the, 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 such a truly caste issue within the Catholic Church? That is our question. So I very much appeal to our Cardinal, uh, the Reverend uh, Peter Thompson, kindly take, take this message. We have great hope in the present Pope Francis. Definitely can do the same things. If Vatican steps in, the hierarchy in India will listen. Otherwise, they are not going to listen. We have to struggle, struggle, struggle. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cardinal Peter has to leave, and we would like him to give us a final message before he leaves. Your Eminence. So thank you again, and sorry to bother you again. <laughs> Certainly, I share, I, share, I share the concerns raised. We listen to bishops, we listen to members of the community, and now we've listened, we've, uh, listened to and watched these tapes of uh, ongoing demonstration, getting the church to recognize uh, uh, what needs to be changed in the church to make it, to make it a church, a church of all, of, of, of all, a church of the people of God. What can I say? What we can say is that the concerns addressed over here, we have the chance of bringing to a bishops' conference where we do, when we do meet with them because they come to Rome on Adlimina. They can visit all the offices and that's the opportunity for them to raise some of these issues with them. So what, uh, what, what I know we can do from our office is that this issue can be shared with all the dicasteries of the Roman Curia, uh, especially the Office of Prov Provocation of Faith, which has a which has the task of uh, of, uh, of making uh, new bishops in the different in the different dioceses whenever the dioceses get empty, and so gradually we try to we try we try to you know get some of these small messages through in the hope that. The passionate leaders of this movement who finally, you know, feel vindicated or who get it through, you know. So, I want to thank you again for this opportunity to be part of this. So, thank you again and I wish you uh, a wonderful continuance, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, good and you know, uh, successful uh, continuation with the program the rest of this, uh, this evening, this afternoon, and then tomorrow when you will continue with this program. Thank you again for inviting me and thank you for the opportunity. The unrelenting attitude and unworthy response of the caste dominant Catholic hierarchy is forcing Dalit Christians to continue their struggle. All their reverential and peaceful appeals, intellectual and theological justifications totally fail. Their demand for equality and equitable rights face only indifference, antagonism and stiff resistance from the hierarchy and superiors. In particular, the almost exclusion of Dalit Catholics from the hierarchy perpetuates the cost domination at all other levels. So. Dalit Christians in recent years have intensified their demand to appoint Dalit bishops, archbishops and prelates 
only with their equitable representation in the hierarchy and leadership there could be a tangible and sustainable change to eradicate casteism and caste discrimination but the catholic hierarchy in india deliberately uses its official positions and proximity to the apostolic nuncio in india the vatican and the holy see only to prevent it this situation now provokes dalit christians even to the extent of seeking for a separate dalit catholic church that is a dalit catholic right directly under the pope the hierarchy in india is emboldened to continue their caste domination and discrimination against dalits with impunity and without accountability only because of the absence of intervention by the apostolic nuncio and the holy see which really amounts to their compliance with the casteist hierarchy it remains a serious violation of spiritual and human rights to dalits within the catholic church the vatican and holy father pope francis need to wake up to this reality and gravity of the situation and make urgent intervention in fact with its permanent observer state status in the united nations the holy see has the obligation to combat casteism and discrimination in the catholic church at this juncture DCLM appeals also for the shared concern and support of the international christian community church leaders and civil society organizations this video documentation is brought out with this message